Dalvina, Guia de Losana, Angita Talita Kinia Navarro, Nambula FM, and Golden Point Resort, Basendo Nambando and Ahere, Vinaka. Bula Vinaka, and other Gotevita, or two and ninety. Anda tak lihat kalau lebaran baru mana bulan FM, nampun dua ni sel. Nada kau macam leh sih, berkeraki NSB nampun bulan FM nampun dua ni sel. Kalau ngau rakyat kita ni kita buat, anda tak lihat kalau lebaran mana bulan FM, nampun dua ni sel. Ungu boleh nusuk. Bulan FM nampun dua ni sel. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In this bulletin, taxi drivers allege misuse of funds. Road accident claims another life. And TC Winston to bring more rain to Fiji. Alleged misuse of funds was top on the agenda for members of the Vaivuweti Cooperative Taxi Association in No Sorry during a meeting yesterday. Members claim that money set aside as savings have disappeared from the company account. Secretary Ilisoni Navila says the man suspected to be behind the misuse is the person assigned to collect and deposit the money. Savara Tambor reports that the man in question happens to be away overseas. <laughs> More than $15,000 have allegedly been withdrawn from the bank without the registered member's knowledge. Secretary Ilisoni Navila says these funds have been collected from each member as their savings on a daily basis. Police officers from the Nosori police station had to intervene yesterday to iron out the problems. By last uh, week we have uh, witnessed and I have also... Uh, had the bank statements uh, here with me regarding the financial report, showing that the thing has been a great downfall. So that's why we are here to do it to, for a new election. Attempts to get comments from the chairman of the cooperative, who's alleged to have used the funds, remains futile. Some members told FBC News that when the taxi business started in 2013, money was deducted from the income on a daily basis for their savings. We are here because of our financial, all the reports are misusing. Here this afternoon to show my grievances. We've been part of the cooperative since the starting and now we have yet to be informed on our savings that was misused. This taxi base was opened by the Prime Minister Warangi Mbainimarama three years ago in an effort to uplift the standard of business amongst Itauke taxi drivers and also assist in the welfare of the members. Sawera Tambua, FBC News. A 22-year-old woman has become the latest road fatality, bringing the death toll to nine compared to five for the same period last year. The driver and the deceased were in a four-wheel drive which reared off the road, went down a cliff and landed in a creek in Tavuni. The woman died on the spot. The driver who fled the scene surrendered himself at the Tavuni police station this morning. Well, in a separate incident in Tamavua, Suva this morning, a taxi driver suffered injuries when he failed to negotiate a bend. It is alleged the driver was drunk. He is admitted at the CWM hospital. Tropical Cyclone Winston, now a Category 4 system, is no longer a threat to the Fiji group for the next 24 hours. However, in the next 48 to 72 hours, the system is expected to gradually turn northwest and track towards the southern Lao group. Madhyum Boletamana has more. Moving further south of Fiji, Tropical Cyclone Winston is expected to make a loop and head directly towards the Fiji group in the next 48 to 72 hours. It is going to come down and it is going to go a little bit of east and then heading towards northeast and where maybe later on Monday or Tuesday uh, we'll have some impact, especially the strong winds coming in, the rain and cloud wind is going to go over us. The system was located 21.9 degrees south and 171.7 degrees east, some 760 kilometers southwest of Nandi and 750 kilometers west southwest of Kandavu at midday today. The message is uh, very seriously uh, as the strong wind warning is uh, already in place for the Sawa and Mamanudis. 
Uh, we also got the strong wind warning for the Batuira Passage, Southwest Bitilevu, and other areas. Uh, please take precautions, uh, especially when the warnings are up. Pravin Kumar says on its projected track back to Fiji in the next 48 hours, the system is expected to weaken to a Category 3 and will bring occasional heavy rains and strong winds. Probability of or the chances of uh, flooding uh, with those bands uh, is there and uh, we advise the members of the public, especially those lying, living in the low-lying areas to take precautions as the rain which will came to be uh, heavy at times is uh, going to be upon us. Kumar has reiterated the call for mariners and the traveling public to take the necessary precautions in the next 72 hours. Madhyum Balitamana, FBC News. The division within the Sodelpa party overwhelmed some of its members during the debate on the vote of no confidence in parliament yesterday. Now, former government whip Semi Koroi Lavisao shared what he knew of their rift when he rose to reject the motion of no confidence. Alan Stoltz tells us more. Employment Minister Semi Koroi Lavisao served as government whip for close to 12 months and says he struggled to change the mindsets of the opposition whip and its members in approaching debates in parliament. There have been uh, three major groupings in Sodapa that uh, I had observed during my discussions with the two whips. And if they had resolved their internal issue and, be, and uh, pick on the, on the strength that they can play when coming into parliament to debate issues, this situation would not, not have arisen today. Seeing that none of the MPs wished to listen to his counsel, Corrella Vassal then turned his attention to helping MP Salote Randronro. And I know that uh, Salote Randronro had a very difficult position to try and follow what I had advised her because of their own instability within their own caucus, the Sodalpa. He ended by saying opposition should have done their duty to suggest better ways to do things instead of putting forward the non-confidence motion, adding that this was the face of a frustrated party that could not accept that government had the majority. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Any member of the House can now be the chair of the Public Accounts Committee. Amendments to the parliamentary standing orders were passed and opposed on Thursday night after the opposition walked out of the debate. Vitika Pratap reports. Opposition MPs walked out late Thursday afternoon while debating changes that would allow any member of the House to be chair of the Public Accounts Committee instead of an opposition MP nominated by the leader of opposition was on. Sodalpa leader Rote Mumukepa says they walked out because they want Professor Biman Prasad to remain in the pack despite his suspension from Parliament. All the other standing committees are chaired by a government, but this, uh, this one is chaired by the opposition, and there's a very good reason for that. And the reason is that because it scrutinizes government spending, which is really taxpayers', uh, taxpayers money, and it is difficult for government to scrutinize the spending of government. They're saying, well, you know, it means it will be um, unfair, etc. Well, that's not true. I mean, the, the reality is that in many countries in the world, the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee is from the government side. We're not saying it will necessarily be from the government side. But the committee must decide on its own as opposed to the standing orders prescribing who the chairperson should be. Another amendment passed on Thursday was that any petitions brought before Parliament must have approval from at least 40% of the House before they are referred to any standing committee. 40% is 20 and uh, we are 15 and uh, NFP is uh, 3 so that is 18 and it's not uh, 20%, it is not the uh, 40% that they are requiring. So they are shutting down the uh, avenues by which people can bring in uh, petitions that are very important to their livelihood. Even though a petition may not necessarily get the 40% approval to go to a standing committee, it does not stop the opposition from bringing it by way of a question in Parliament. It does not stop the opposition by way of bringing a motion in Parliament. So all those avenues are available. Uh, I think they seem to have a knee-jerk reaction. It doesn't do them any good, eh? Okay. So uh, that's where we'll uh, end our story tonight. 
uh, continuous workout because uh, they're confused about what they op their job supposed to be in, in Parliament. Okay. Following the workout by Sodelpa, debate continued in the House and the amendment was consequently passed and opposed. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Coming up after the break, Fiji to sign climate change agreement in April. Yandra, I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from the Hills. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Berlin. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. You're with FBC News. Parliament has ratified the Paris Agreement under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Prime Minister Varangabaini Marama will travel to New York to sign the historic climate change agreement that was reached in Paris in December last year. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has invited all leaders to a signing ceremony at the UN headquarters on 22nd April. Ban Ki-moon intends to use the occasion to further engage leaders to put the new agreement into action. Attorney General Ayan Sayed Kayum says Fiji wants to be one of the first states to ratify the agreement. We also want to establish Fiji as one of the leading um, uh, uh, island nations in the world to discuss the new areas of legal implications of climate change, such as climate change refugees, such as the legal implications on the loss of land and land that sinks underwater, about the territoriality of it in particular countries that sink underwater, and of course ownership, etc., that comes into it. Said Kayum says Fiji has also been recognized for its leadership in escalating the awareness internationally about the impacts of climate change, in particular for small island developing states. The Fiji Institute of Accountants says it was legally bound to inform the Registrar of Parties about an unregistered accountancy firm auditing the National Federation Party. FIA President Nozab Farid has confirmed that the NFP's accounts audit was not carried out by an accountant accredited with a Certificate of Public Practice. Farid says the certificate is only given to chartered accountants who have work experience in another firm already accredited with a CPP. He says the FIA was simply following the law. So in this case, it has happened, somebody has seen, they made a complaint. So we inform uh, supervisor of election, uh, sir, please note, we saw this in the paper, but according to our records, this company or this person is not a CPP. So therefore, he can't sign off. So thereafter, what happens is actually beyond our control. We are, sub we as a professional body, we are supposed to show what is right, what is wrong. The FIA to date has 800 members, 290 are chartered accountants, and 41 have CPP accreditation. The Suva High Court has found former Information and Public Relations Officer at the Prime Minister's office, Rudra Maharaj, guilty of one count of bribery. Judge Justice Priyanta Fernando delivered his judgment, concurring with the three assessors who found Maharaj guilty. In September 2013, he accepted an advantage of $2,000 and two cheques amounting to $10,000 from one Avin Prakash. On account of using influence in procuring a contract, Maharaj has been remanded in custody. And he will be sentenced on Tuesday. The Health Ministry is excited by data that indicates that Fijians are living longer. This has been confirmed to FPC News by advisor for non-communicable diseases, Dr. Isimeli Tukana. Akasita Tale has more. The Health Ministry has been able to improve the age of premature death from 60 to 70 years. Advisor for non-communicable diseases, Dr. Tukana says, 60 years used to be the cut-off mark as only 15% of Fijians lived past their 50s. But now we found at the end of... Um end of 2015 that a uh, significant number are dying between 60 and 70 so we are able to shift uh, up so people are living longer but they need to live healthier 
the last thing we want is uh, living long and sickly. We want to live long and live healthy. According to global figures, the average life expectancy at birth was 71 years, 68.5 years for males and 73.5 years for females over the period 2010 to 2013. Dr. Tukane says Fiji's target is a quality life for all Fijians, even past the age of 70. One thing is to live long. Uh, and it's a good sign because uh, Fiji's life expectancy is also less than 70. So in both angles, it's less than uh, 70. Yeah? So what the uh, Ministry of Health and the government is trying to do is not only add years to life, but also add life to years. WHO has ranked Fiji 119th on the list of the long life expectancy, while the UN has ranked us 121st out of 198 countries. Akusit Tale, FBC News. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, it was a double celebration for the Digicel staff in Suva as they were treated to a traditional Chinese New Year dragon dance. Digicel Chief Executive Darren McLean says Fiji has a significant Chinese population who contribute a lot to the country's economy. Kelly Vadala files this report. The Digicel office and staff dressed up in red for Valentine's Day on Sunday. However, the Digicel team was also given a taste of Chinese New Year celebrations still underway. Digicel CEO Darren McLean says cultural celebrations like these set Fiji apart from the world. One of the great things about Fiji is the multicultural dimension of Fiji. So a very significant Chinese population in Fiji that makes a big contribution to the economy as well. So um, it's great to, that we have the different holidays and the different national events across the sort of, I guess, three different ethnicities that exist in, uh, in Fiji. So that's one of the things I really love about this place. It was a pleasant distraction for the Digicel staff and some closely observed what the Dragon Dance was all about. Chief of Finance Farid Mohammed says the traditional dance gave staff a chance to also dress up for the occasion. Indian calendar uh, as well as internationally as well, the Chinese New Year is part of one of those celebrations that we have every year. Um, it has so happened that it's coincided with the Valentine's um, Day coming in the weekend, so that's given the, uh, the, the staff an opportunity to dress up um, and look forward to the weekend. 2016 is the Chinese year of the monkey, which means vigor, vitality and accomplishment. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. In sports after the break, Fijiana ready for Brazil. An early start for young netballers. All this and more after the break. मैं उरियान खान गुरबो तालेबु के जैसे फेस्टिवल ए ग्रेट है गुरबो में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 एक गुरबो में एलीन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सायमाने हम फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर 1 है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जॉइंट सप्लाई में और मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट पे आई लाइक इट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट Welcome to FPC Sports. The Telecom Fijiana side is heading to the Sao Paulo 7s in Brazil with a confident stride. The side left our shows last night determined to improve their 7th place ranking in the Women's World 7 Series. And Charlin Daudakadaka tells us more. The hard work is behind them. Now the Telecom Fijiana side is ready to prove their worth in the second leg of the Women's World Series in Brazil. Uh, we've been uh, preparing for the last two weeks and this is the third week and now uh, we're traveling so it's been a uh, hard two weeks, hard time. Two changes have been made to the side which won the bowl title in the Dubai 7s last year, 18-year-old Miriam Marama and Miriam Nayo Basanga, who have both acclimatized well to the team's game pattern. They've been training so hard to be part of this team, so lucky for the two of two of the new under-18 girls being part of this uh, tour to Brazil. Fiji is pulled with Australia, Canada and Ireland in the Sao Paulo 7s, which kicks off next Sunday. Talendo Takadaka, FBC Sports. The Sinu Secondary School defeated Queen Victoria School 16-12 in the first round of the Southeast Under-19 Rugby League competition in Suva this afternoon. 
As last year's champions, Nasinu had to defend the Batitano Shield against the boys from Vulinitu. Eight schools are competing in the under-19, 17 and under-15 grades with the top four schools to go through to the national competition. We have a Bati, Bati Tanwa shield that uh, is now uh, won by Nasinu Secondary School. It's a very tough game for the two teams which shows the great, the level of fitness that they have. Eh? The competition will continue next Saturday at Marceline Primary School in Vatuanga. Netball Fiji has started the ball rolling in preparing the national under-21 side for the World Youth Championship in Botswana next year. First, the team needs to qualify among the top three spots in the regional qualifier in Auckland in September. Chalindal Dakadaka reports. These young players fronted up at the FMF Gymnasium, eager to please selectors to make the cut in the national under-21 squad. Yes, we have about 90 girls that are trialling uh, today. Uh, the major objective of the trial is to identify talent for our youth team. And the youth team will be representing uh, Fiji for the World Youth Netball Championship that will be held in Botswana next year, September. Some familiar faces were among the selectors, former and current national reps, assisting in identifying the next generation of Fiji Pearls. Some of these players have been in our Talent ID program since uh, last year. Some have been playing uh, in our uh, top uh, club teams. Some have been playing in, uh, in our district teams. So uh, um, we have some really experienced players in here. And of course, uh, there are some uh, new talent. We have two uh, overseas bass players who are trialling today. And they've come from New Zealand. Of the 90 players who turned up today, 40 will be selected and will be given a tough training program to follow during the season. Talent of the Kadaka, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji fut futsal side went down to New Zealand 3-1 in the Oceania Futsal Championship in Suva yesterday. Fiji skipper Mira Sahib scored the host lone goal in the second spell. The Solomon Islands remain unbeaten after four games following a 6-1 thrashing of Vanuatu, while Tahiti beat New Caledonia 2-1. Fiji's last game of the tournament against Solomon Islands is now underway. Earlier today, Tahiti beat Vanuatu 5-2. The last match of the one-week competition will see New Zealand face New Caledonia at 8 p.m. Solomon Islands looks on track to win the title for the fifth time and qualify for the FIFA Futsal World Cup in Colombia in September. Lombasa and Bar got off to a winning start in the opening round of the Vodafone Premier League this afternoon. Lombasa hammered neighbours Draketi 6-0 at Subrail Park with Gabrieli Matanisinga scoring a brace of goals. In the other match today, Ba defeated Lotoka 3-1 at Govan Park. Well, tomorrow Nandi will host Nandronga at 3pm at Prince Charles Park, while Rewa takes on Suva at the same time at Ratudakambal Park. <laughs> Cloudy conditions with occasional rain was experienced over the country today. Severe tropical cyclone Winston, a Category 4 now, was located about 760 kilometers southwest of Nandi at midday today. TC Winston is moving south at 20 kilometers per hour and is expected to be located about 835 kilometers southwest of Nandi at midnight tonight. Associated rain bands will continue to affect the group. Well, it was another hot day throughout the country. Nandi, Suva and Lambasa recorded 33 degrees, while Lotoka, Ba and Savu Sabu were on 32. As for tomorrow, for Yasawa and the Mamanu, the group strong northerly winds with an average speed of 45 km per hour with momentary gusts to 65 km per hour. Rough seas are expected and occasional rain and few scully thunderstorms as well. The outlook for Monday is for brief showers. Recapping our main stories tonight, Vevueti Taxi Association members allege $15,000 is missing from the company account. A 22-year-old woman has become the latest road fatality. And Tropical Cyclone Winston is expected to bring more rain into the country. On to this week's poll question, in light of the Sydney 7s, we ask...
Is the Fiji Sevens team on track to winning gold at the Rio Olympics? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensicedfpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. Good night.